Emily's just said I can't see Tanya. Oh, man. Yeah, that's it. It might be your own views. If you click up the top and put view, where it says speaker view and gallery view, I think. Yeah, because yeah. I've got us five now. Yeah, yeah, I've got us five. Right. Okay, guys. So welcome to night three. Um, it's been, I've absolutely loved doing the training, literally back to back to back, because it's, it's fresh in my head. I feel like I've been buzzing like every single day. Yeah. Um, seeing all this um, training. So welcome to day three. So if you have turned up to every single night, give yourself a whoop whoop because that goes to show that you are serious about this business and you really, really want to grow. And I'm seeing some of the same faces, same names. I have loved getting inboxes from people telling me like what you've done off the back of the training. Like when someone inboxes you and goes, oh my God, I've just been and done X, Y, and Z that you said last night. I'm like, yes, because it means that it's having an impact. It really is having an impact. So hopefully this will be like the first of many trainings that we all do together. So tonight we are joined by five SSDs, five superstar directors, five people that have hit the top of the compensation plan in Sensi. So that's where I want to start. We've been talking about networking. We've given you loads of ideas. We've given you loads of practical tips. Tonight, you're going to literally hear top tips from all of us. Now, some of them might be exactly the same um, because, believe it or not, this business, and I'm going to use Laura's favorite saying, is simple. And it needs to be simple, simple and duplicatable. Is that even a real word? Um, yeah. It needs to be duplicatable, which basically means you can do it over and over again with simple systems that literally produce results because it's simplicity. It's not a difficult business and we are all walking proof of that because all five of us sitting here have hit superstar director we've got four directors underneath us um minimum and we're still growing and our business is still growing so i want to start to talk about that i hear the word and um, when it comes to networking all the time oh there's too many sensory consultants and the market is i'm going to say the word saturated oh my god i freaking hate that word that word is like hate it with a passion but, um, and this is, if you like, we us five are walking proof that the market's not saturated and it is much, we are walking proof and, and sensory proof that this can be done even when there are lots of sensory consultants in your area. So I live in Wickford. Um, Laura Bynes lives in South Woodham, which is like five minutes from me. Laura now lives in Holbridge, that's 10 minutes from me. Tan and Claire live on Canby, that's 10 minutes from me. So that's the difference. We all live within a 10 mile radius, 15 mile radius at most of one another. I don't think it's even 15 miles to go yeah. from one to the furthest point. You're looking at 10 mile radius and you've got five people that are at the top of the business, the top of the compensation plan. Um, I'll put the, the, what's the link? What's it called? Income disclosure. We're all earning a really good wage from this. And the reason I'm telling you this is not so that you can go, well, they're all like bigging themselves up. It's because we hear all the time there's too many sensor consultants in my area. If I thought that, I would definitely not be sitting here right now. When you look at mine and Tan's network, for example, our networks cross over massively because we've got a big family network and we have also have a very big friendship group and that interlinks like this. And then Laura and I, we'd never met before Sensi, if you actually look at our Facebooks, if you take out all the Sensi people, I think we had like 400 mutual friends before we even before I even started selling Sensi. When I first met her, we and we were like, oh yeah, you know so and so, and you know so and so. It was actually mad. We were going, how do you know that person? How do you know that person? Yeah. How do you know that person? Yeah, but at this, but has that affected? Has this affected? Like Claire, for example, is Tan's best friend in our circle of friends. I know Laura, for example, and Laura are. Uh, You've, you've got friends via your brother. I'm right in saying that. I don't yeah, know. brother and husband. And, and uh, got, got a, another group of friends there. They all know each other. That hasn't affected our businesses in any way, shape or form. And that's, it's a bit of a truth bomb because I hate hearing when someone says, it's too many consultants, can't do this. And I'm like, hello, like, hello. Open your eyes, okay, to this right here on this screen. It is magic. Okay, and that's not because there's anything that we did. We just did the simple things that we talked about last night. We did the simple things that we're going to talk about tonight, like our best secrets of networking. You're going to hear them. And if you do those things over and over again and you make them a duplicatable system and you don't care about what anyone else is doing, you stay in your lane, okay? 
something I've really struggled to do recently, but my head's been given a wobble. I'm back in the game, definitely back in the game. I think the kitchen all being all looking all pretty is just definitely helping me. <laughs> Feeling good about that whole situation um, today. Um, but, um, you know, you need to stay in your own lane and not worry about what anyone else is doing and just be like, do you know what? It doesn't matter that there's a sensi director that lives two doors down the road from me. It doesn't matter that Lisa lives in the same town as me and she's a sensi director because it does not matter. It didn't affect us, so don't let it affect you. And that's that's the thing with networking. That's the message I want you to definitely walk away with tonight. Regard, regarding all the tips, we're giving you all the tools and we know that it's something some of you are going to have to teach yourselves. Some of you are going to find really supernatural. Supernatural, that's that weird. Um, <laughs> some of you are going to find really supernatural. But if you, but if the minute you say, I can't do this because there's too many consultants, there are, I don't even know how many people there are in the world. Does anyone know a number? Because well, even, Just in Essex, there's something like, I don't know, it was some, it's like 18 million or something ridiculous. Yeah. I'm oh, pretty sure when I look okay. but there's an eight there, somewhere. there was over like a billion users on Instagram, for example. And if you've got yeah. that amount of users using a social media platform, you don't really even need to leave your house. You literally can do that from your phone. You can, you know, network with all of those people from your I'm phone. Good. It's yeah. about not giving up. And it's about not having those hurdles, saying to yourself, do you know what? Today hasn't been successful. I haven't networked very well. Or yes, someone's told me that they've already got a consultant. Who cares? You know, Put that one under There's 7.9 billion. In the world? 7.9 7 .9 billion people in the world. There you go. And I, I know you've all been born all the time. Yeah. And I know you can't recruit all those people and you can't sell to all those people. And we are limited to countries that we can recruit and sell to. But it's definitely about thinking outside the box. Taking these things, these tangible tools that we've given you and making them work for you. Not making them work for your downline, not making them work for your best friend that does Sensi, making it work for you because it's your business and no one else is, literally. And yeah, it's that simple. So who wants to go first, ladies? That is the introduction. I feel like that's like a massive truth bomb, by the way. <laughs> and I feel like it's something we probably wanted to say to like the whole world of Sensi many a times and we just haven't had a chance to do it. So. <laughs> I, I always say, I always say there's 90,000 people in Castle Point. I don't know if that's still right, but I always say, because I hear all the time, you and Tan and Lisa have got Canby. And I go, but there's 90,000 people. We don't sell to 90,000 people. So don't. No, we don't. Exactly. And also, I don't I wish hardly no. any people on Canby anymore. I was telling, saying that to you, Tan, weren't I? I was like, hardly sell to any at all. But that's because you've broadened your, yeah. you, you've, you've kept growing. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. That's all the thing. And it's, it's like uh, there's a reason that Sensi, a lot, a lot of companies like this. So just to give you an example, when I was a fitness instructor, um, I did the club size course, you know, with the glow sticks. Um, and in that business, you had territories, and you weren't allowed if you were setting up um, a class. You signed a document to say that I will set up a uh, club size class within however many round radius and you have to check on the checker and find your hall and all that stuff there's a reason since you don't do that we don't i don't own holbridge just like the, the other sensei consultants that live here don't own holbridge you know do you think like david beckham when he thought i'll tell you what i'm going to be a professional footballer better not do that there's a few footballers around you know like it just doesn't work like that we are and it's it just reiterates what we've all said so many times um, we all have the same product. Sensi is the product, but you are your brand. So when I moved to this village, genuinely, honestly, and truly, it wouldn't have mattered to me if every single person in this road was a Sensi consultant, because they're not me, just like you. I'm not you. And, you know, these girls are all individual as well. And all you're all individual. So it, it doesn't matter. It's almost irrelevant, like who's around you. And if you're worried about people in your area, like you'd never build a team. Like yeah. it's what we do. So. Well, I just, I just had a quick look. There's... 40,000 people that live on Canby. And I reckon I sell to 25 people, probably <laughs> maximum on Canby. <laughs> so I definitely, and Claire don't run Canby, Lisa don't run Canby, I don't run, that's just Canby. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Most of my customers aren't even on Canby, but yeah. My, yeah. And all the people that are not from Canby, are, are like from all over the country, are thinking, where's Canby? Go look it up, people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go look it up. Very special place. <laughs> little candy <candy-bun. laughs> little candy candy anyway <laughs> go on guys who's gonna go first who wants to go first i feel like me and time done quite a lot of talking so it's over to I, you. I don't mind That's all right, all right. go for it me yeah 
Okay, so, <laughs> um, hi everyone, I am Claire Watson, in case you don't know me, and my team are Claire Sense Stars, and I'm actually coming up to my three year anniversary of Sensi. Um, I joined on the 30th of June 2018, is that right? Um, so yeah, um, my top tip, and my team are going to go, here she goes again, um, but I have pretty much grown my business going live. Um, that is my sort of go-to. If someone says to me, I'm really, really quiet, my first question is, have you gone live? Um, I would say if you're not going live at least once a week, your customers probably won't be able to get to know you as well. I'm not saying you have to do it, but if you can brave it, that is probably one of my biggest tips. Um, just open your orders, open your orders live. Um, like unpack your orders. I know you might think that might be boring, but people love it. People are nosy and they want to see what people have ordered. So that is probably one of my biggest, biggest tips for growing your customer base. And also for getting new people involved, because I find people that watch my lives might not even be my customers. It's just that new people will pop up while I'm live. So that is one of my really, really big tips. I literally went live the day that I joined and when I got my starter kit. So if you're just joining, go live. Honestly, open your starter kit live. And if you haven't done that and you've still got it, do it. Honestly, you might get some people join your team from it. It's really, really important. Um, my other big thing is don't ever go out Scentsy naked. So I've grabbed my bag. Um, you don't have to have a Scentsy bag, obviously. This was just a purchase that um, I love my uh, Scentsy stuff. Lisa always says I've been Scentsy sixed on, don't you, Lisa? But um, <laughs> always got the merch. <laughs> I'm always like in a hoodie. Me and Tan have to make sure we don't wear the same hoodies up the school one because we're always dressed in our hoodies. We actually have turned up at the school in the exact same before as well. <laughs> same trainers, same trousers, same jumpers. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, so yeah, I've always got like my name and my mobile numbers on there, my website, but I always make sure I've got something in my bag to hand out if someone stops me or if I'm talking to someone about Cincy. So these shiny envelopes, I haven't always used these. Um, but these really stand out. So if you've got this hanging out of your bag, it's really likely that if you're speaking to someone, they're going to ask you what it is. Um, I was once in Morrison's and paying, and I always make sure it's just popping out. And the lady serving me said, oh, what's that in your bag? Uh, what's that pink envelope? And I went, oh, it's actually samples. She went, samples for what? I thought it was makeup or something. I went, no, it's um, Scentsy samples. And she went, what's Scentsy? And she lives on okay. camera, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> she lives on like, camera. Oh. And I, <laughs> I just literally said, um, do you like candles? Do you use candles in your home? She said, yeah, my mum loves them. And I just went, do you want some samples? And this was in COVID times, by the way. And she took them. So always, always have something on you to pass if conversations come up. And that can be in a doctor's surgery. I know at the moment, obviously, we're not going to doctors, but it can be literally anywhere. Um, trying to think on the school run you might get talking to people if you're in the shop if you've got a hospital appointment anywhere at all definitely if you're at the hairdressers or um, getting your lashes done something like that I also make sure I've always got hand cream in my bag and I don't think Leanne Beadle's watching but I'll never forget we was at a um, one of my kids at a play and I'm sitting in one of the rows and I'm talking to one of the mums and I pulled out my hand cream and it wasn't this one it was a pink prom so it's really strong and I pulled it out and I'm putting it on my hands and literally all the mums sitting around me started asking me what this was and Leanne wrote on my team chat so it dinged up on my phone oh my god Claire's sitting in the school uh, play selling Sensi but it honestly did work because people stopped me and asked me what it was and then obviously make sure you've got something to hand them or tell them about your group but that is Probably one of my biggest tips is don't go out sensi naked. Always make sure you've got something on you. Definitely. Just reading the comments, make sure I haven't missed anything. Um, and yeah, my main one was to go live and also carry this baby with you. So I always, if it's not out, make sure you've got this with you. Um, I've had people say to me, I can't get my borrow bag out, hand it to them. 
when you're giving them their orders, literally say, you haven't had this bag for a little while, do you want to smell all the testers and hand it to them? You don't have to ask people if they want it. And um, I also would say if you've got a child with a buggy, hang it on the buggy when you're doing the school run, if you're popping to the shops, anywhere you go, just make sure you've got this. And if you're working at the moment as well, lots of you have gone back to the office, take it with you and say you couldn't leave it in your bag because you don't want it to melt in the car. That's what I used to do all the time when I worked at the bank. So I used to go, oh, I had to take this in with me. I used to put it on my desk and go, I didn't want to leave it in the car because it's going to melt. I'm not joking. I really did do that. And then I used to just pull them out and have a sniff or leave it open. And yeah, that's, that's probably one of my biggest biggest tips if we're not talking about social media that is probably one of my main ways to get my borrow bag out and um, I think as well people think a borrow bag has to be to new customers it doesn't just have to be to new customers it can be getting your bag back out you could then end up with a six bar of wax order just from handing someone your bag of smells it's already a customer but probably buys the same waxes because yes, they haven't had the bag yeah, I literally do hand it to people at times. And if I know they haven't had the new season scents, I'll go, when I'm giving them their order, I'll go, oh, I've got this on me, by the way. Do you want to borrow it for a couple of days? And I'll just give it to them. So they yeah. don't really have a choice. 100%. <laughs> um, and Emma, I don't know if she's on here, but she's my new teamie from last week. I went to drop her the borrow bag with the new season scents, ended up chatting to her on her doorstep, and she joined the next day. Oh, that's brilliant. So a borrow bag can result in a TV as well. Yeah. Brilliant, love that. Um, the only last thing I have got written down, then I'll let the others talk, is about um, on Facebook. So I'm quite getting, I'm quite good at building relationships with people. Ugh, sorry, building relationships with people. And um, so when I do give sample packs to people, if they are really friendly, I do get talking to them. I'll ask them what they do for a living, that kind of thing. Um, and I did end up, I really don't know how it happened, but I ended up actually becoming an admin on a work from home group, just from a sample pack. Um, I don't know how I get myself into these things, but that then gave me so many more people to speak to because I got added to the admin group. And um, so there's lots and lots of other people on there. They're now my Facebook friends. They all follow me. And I actually have no doubt that eventually they might become joiners because they might be in businesses that they're not happy in or that doesn't work out for them. So I just keep them as my friends now. Um, but that was purely through a sample pack and the lady had samples of me. I'm not sure why she took them to be honest because she wasn't really interested. She, she does some sort of other wax company. Um, but she said to me, I'm really sorry, Claire, I would absolutely join your team. Like, I think you're amazing, but uh, do you want to be admin on my work from home group and maybe you'll get joined us that way so I was like yeah yeah of course added me and that has given me a lot a lot of new contacts so just I know people do have some bad ex experiences with sample packs but you also do have some really good ones and it might open you up to so many new contacts so yeah I'll, I'll let the others go now <laughs> hope that helps <laughs> Want me to go next, girls? Yeah, go for it. You're on mute, Lise. If you're muted. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I could see you talking. I was like, no. She's on mute. <laughs> so go for it. <laughs> okay, right. The thing that I'm going to start with is actually something that I have hugely been working on myself over the past couple of months, and that's upping my social media game. And with that, I think everyone is very guilty of thinking, oh, I'm really good at Facebook, so I'm primarily gonna concentrate on that. And everyone's like, oh, I don't really understand Instagram, I don't really know what I'm doing, so I'm just gonna primarily focus on my Facebook. And I was 100% guilty of that. I didn't really utilize my Instagram, I didn't do a huge amount with it, I popped a few posts up and that was about it. And then I think it was actually watching an Instagram training by Yuli, so I was like, right, I need to, I need to up my game. Like, it's a classic excuse, if I don't really know what I'm doing, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to put myself out there and, and do it wrong. But then I was like, you know what, the only way you learn is by doing things. And I'm saying that to my girls and my team all the time. So I thought I can't preach that and then not do it myself. So with my Instagram, I thought I really need to up my game with this. And I thought about the way that I use Instagram and I thought I don't scroll through posts. I literally never scroll through posts. I 
look through stories all the time. And stories is where people are interested. People haven't got time to sit and scroll. Maybe during lockdown they did, but especially now they haven't got time to stop and scroll. So people are using their stories. So you need to get involved with Instagram and jump over that hurdle of thinking, I don't really know how to story. Because honestly, I'm, Laura will tell you this, I'm the biggest technophobe ever. I'm absolutely useless for technology. I don't know what I'm doing oh, with technology. Yeah. I'm like a little old lady. But if I can story, then anyone can story. And I have got so many new customers through doing my stories. And the reason I feel like I have is because my stories aren't sensey, 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 sensey. Because even Pad says, when he looks at my stories, he's like, oh, I flick past the sensey ones. I'm like, thanks a lot. He's like, when it's a warmer, I just flick past. He's like, and the other ones I watch. And I thought, there are going to be people out there that haven't joined your page to purely look at Sensi. They've joined your page for other reasons, to be nosy. And I know I've got a lot of people that have joined my Instagram page because over the last 18 months, we've been renovating our house. And I've started to get people that have joined my page that want to be nosy about my house. They have in turn watched my stories, watched the six stories that I've done of pictures of my house. And then I've popped a warmer in there or then I've popped some wash with pictures in there. And it spiked people's interest who probably wouldn't have been on my page or I wouldn't have been able to network with them in any other way. Um, so I feel like through me just being myself, I have been able to network with more people because I haven't been spammy. I haven't been salesy. I have purely just, I guess, storied my life and my day-to-day -day life, whether it be my house, my kids, but thrown my sensi within there as well. And it, I get so much more interaction through my stories than I ever do from any Facebook posts, than I ever have from any other Instagram post. Um, it's stories I feel is where that interaction is. So if you don't already use your stories on Instagram, then start using them. Um, the thing that I've only literally just started doing, me and Laura had this conversation last week. Laura was around here for a coffee and I was like, I need to get involved with these bloody reels. I don't know how I'm do how to do it. I was like, we need to figure this out, Laura. And I was like, do you know how to do it? She was like, no. I was like, right, okay. I'm, blind. I'm not even kidding, right? It's ridiculous. <laughs> and I was like, right, one you, of us. You know, how to, you know how to TikTok. That's the I know, I've done it now. I'm all over it. It's amazing. Oh, I, still, I still don't know how to TikTok. That's, an, that's another day. <laughs> the same honestly it's exactly the same but honestly I was like do you know what I'm just gonna have to do this I'm just gonna have to get over the fear you know like some of you may have that fear of going live and you think oh I don't want to go live because what if somebody judges me and we always say just do it it's like ripping off a plaster and once actually you go live you're like oh actually it's not that bad and you see the reach you get from your live and it makes you think I totally want to do that again but honestly doing these reels I've, I, I'm, I've got a really small following on Instagram um and around like the five, six hundred mark, um, I've done a reel and it's been seen by nearly 2,000 people, which literally blew my tiny mind and made me think, okay, I need to get involved in this <laughs> a little bit more. I've gained loads of new followers. Again, people that I never would have been able to network with, people from all different areas of the country that I wouldn't have been able to get sensey under their noses in any other way. But they've seen that, it spiked their interest and I've had conversations with people. No, they're not customers as of yet, but down the line, they may well be customers or even potential teammates. So that's my first tip is up your game on social media. If you've got Facebook down to a T, brilliant, well done. Try and also get yourself involved in Instagram. If you already Instagram post an Instagram story, get yourself involved, involved with Reels. If you're already doing all that, but it's all about the product, then get some more of your real life on there as well. Um, get your face out there a little bit as well, because obviously that's gonna interest people more because people are nosy. Um, off the back of also saying about upping your social media game, on Instagram, try to network with people in a, in a totally nonsensy, non-salesy way, but still build relationships with people on Instagram. What, what I mean by this, there is a girl, she's an influencer on Instagram, and her daughter happens to be called Violet. So I literally inboxed her and I was like, oh my God, I've got a little girl called Violet and I've never met anyone else with the, someone with the name Violet. And she, me and her have had messages back and forth. She's got a massive, massive, massive following. Started talking about a week down the line, we've had a conversation about Sensi, a sample back has been sent to her. That's led on to us having a conversation about her joining. And this is purely because I found her on Instagram and her kid's called Violet. And I've not gone in there and gone, oh, hi, I sell Sensi, because she would have gone delete and would have paid zero interest in me. But I've built a relationship. I've networked and I've built a relationship with somebody and I've thrown Sensi into the mix. Um, 
so definitely reach out to people if you have a common interest i think tanya and lisa you spoke about this yesterday if you found find a common interest with people like house renovations for me is a common interest so i'm following house accounts and it i can start conversations with people because they know i'm not trying to have a conversation just because I sell Sensi, they'll see my page, they'll see all the house stuff and they'll think, oh, maybe she's having a conversation over the house thing. So find those common interests because it's a really simple way of networking with people who never would have had the opportunity to network with in any other kind of walk of life. Um, and then the other tip I'm just gonna say is um, generosity. It's one of the core values of Sensi. Um, and I think there's so many times when obviously we're looking for things purely to potentially make a sale, potentially to get a new customer. But sometimes the simplest way to network is just to be a good person and be generous. And by this, what I mean is today I was at the hairdressers and I noticed last time I was in there, they had a rubbish old reed stick fuser. I know it didn't smell great in their toilet. And so today I was like, I'm just gonna go and take them a little favorites flower. I had loads in stock, so it, it worked for me. It's not something I had to pay out for or anything like that. I'd used my credits to get it, so it cost me nothing. And when I went in there, I was like, oh, I just thought I'd give you a little fragrance flower to pop in your toilet. They were like, oh my God, that's really kind. Like, do we owe you anything? And I was like, no, no, it's fine. It's just a little gift. Like, pop it in your toilet. It's just for you. And they came out to me about half an hour later. They're like, can we post this on our Instagram? I was like, yeah, you can. Of course you can. Because now I'm like, brilliant. I literally have just done it because I am being was being kind. But they've popped it on their Instagram. Any customers that potentially use their toilets might even go in there and go, that smells amazing. What is that? And they can then explain, et cetera, et cetera. I've not put, didn't say to them, can I get some sense into your salon? Can I put a warmer there? Can I put business cards there? Can I put my this there that, and try to be all, make it all about me? I've purely gone in there and gone, do you want this? And they've gone, yeah, that's that's really kind. And I, I've i done the whole going into the hairdressers before and asked to put my stuff in there. And don't get me wrong, it's a great thing to do. But if you don't feel confident doing that, which I didn't, I, I am just not that person. I didn't feel confident going in and going, can I put my stuff in your salon? But me going into my salon that I use and say, here's a present, has done a good deed. And in turn, I've been able to network because now they've put it on their Instagram and it's opened up new potential people that are going to see that. And my page is tagged on there, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then the final thing, which Claire's already covered, I'm going to say it as well because you can't say it enough, always have sample packs made up, never be sensi naked, because you never know who you're gonna have a conversation with. And I've kicked myself so many times when I've had a conversation with someone and I'm like, oh, I don't have one. And that person has gone and then we haven't been able to go any further. They haven't got any of this under their nose. So this is a super simple one because I'm really low on stuff at the moment, but it's literally got a catalog. It's got a little bit about who I am. Um, it's got a printout that I've done on fragrance flowers and it's got like three samples and a couple of little sweets in there. And what I'm also gonna do when I've got some more made up is um, gonna give some to my husband because he um, is in the building trade. And so he builds houses for people, people with lots of money, which is always helpful. And he's had lots of customers go, oh, so what does your wife do? So now I'm gonna go to, well, when they ask, you can then give them the sample pack. So have these made up all the time. And I know Claire had already said it, but I felt like I needed to say it again, because I think it's such an important point. That you need to always make sure it doesn't have to be anything fancy or singing or dancing, but it just needs to have your catalog in it with your name on it and your number on it. And basic stuff about what Sensi is. Not loads, you don't want to throw up Sensi all over them and scare them off, but enough to kind of spike their interest. I've got loads more written down because whilst you were talking, I wrote loads down, but I don't want to talk over because you know that I'll just ramble on for a really long time. So I'll stop. <laughs> I get a bit Sensi word vomit, don't I? And I'll just spurt it all out. <laughs> we all do. Go on okay. Shall I go? Mm-hmm. Cool, okay, so similar to what Laura just said, I have got, look, I've literally chucked quite, so I'll try and pick out like some top points because I do get a little bit bit overexcited and I need to just take a breath. So, um, hello everybody, um, I'm Laura Sawkins. I am SSD of Team Glitter Sparkle. Um, I've been with Sensi for four years, just gone. Um, and yeah, we are a network marketing business. Uh, we're party plan, so we are kind of, a little bit old school, which I absolutely love. I love that, and, and I was saying this to Lisa on the phone this morning, uh, on a voice note, um, mm -hmm. I love that we stand out in the market. We yeah. are all, we're all about building those relationships. We're not spammy salespeople, and you don't need to be to build 
um, a really strong, uh, credible business with longevity. And we're, like like the girl said, we're all living proof of that. You know, we all live so close and we've all been built a business. So, okay, first one I want to say is opportunity is everywhere, like literally everywhere. Um, when people join and they say, oh, I don't know anybody. It's not about the people that you know now. It's about the people that you're yet to meet. You're in a network marketing business. So the clues in the title, you need to network, which is obviously why you're all here. So I take my hat off to you for that. But you have to think bigger than the people that you know now. And you have to think bigger than the people that live in your town or live in your circle. We are literally a worldwide business opportunity in the countries we're open, obviously. Um, so a little bit like what I said earlier, you know, where you live, the people that are around you, it doesn't matter. It's absolutely irrelevant because we literally... Someone always knows, someone always knows, someone always knows, someone always knows someone. And every single day, I can say this now, you know, because we're not in lockdown. Every single day that you walk out of your front door is an opportunity to talk to somebody about Cincy. And I'm just going to tell you, this is a true story. I haven't made this up for the purpose of the Zoom. If you, was on, if you follow me on Instagram, I, told, I shared this on my stories this morning. I've just been up to um, Manchester for uh, like a business event. I stayed in a hotel last night. I was having loads of problems with my lights kept tripping. Oh, honestly, can't make this stuff up. I had to like put my joggers on, go down to reception, get, anyway, it was a bit of a nightmare. But the girl that sorted it out was really helpful. So yes, there was an issue, but she dealt with it really well. So when I went down this morning, she was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Anyway, we had a bit of a chat back and forth. And um, she just said like, oh, what are you, are you, back? are you coming back? That was it. She went, are you coming back? And I was like, oh, I was up here for work. She was like, oh, what do you do? Well, let me tell you what I do. So obviously I'm very grateful that I had a Scentsy suitcase with me. So I could say, this is, this is my business. But if I didn't, I would have obviously had no problem in saying, oh, I sell Scentsy or, you know, I run a Scentsy business. Do you know what Scentsy is? And similar to what Claire said a minute ago, she went, oh, I don't know what Scentsy is. And I was like, right. Um, so I, there was her and there was a guy there and they'd already asked me if um, I would fill in a customer satisfaction survey because I thanked them for how they dealt with the situation. So I said, yeah, that's absolutely fine. No problems at all. Can I take your names? So I um, so I know who I'm talking about. So they got a card, they wrote their, their names down. Obviously I know the address where they work, I know the phone number. Um, so I said, that's brilliant. I will fill it in, which I am going to do. I've said, I'm going to send you a sense sample pack. Um, and she was all, you know, she was all excited and she was asking what it is. So that literally came from a five minute conversation about, you know, my lights blowing, but I would have dropped that into conversation anyway. Because, and that was literally five minutes this morning in Manchester, nowhere near where I live. So obviously I'm going to follow up, send her a sample pack. Obviously I'm going to follow up with her. You know, she, hopefully she will fall in love with the product. She could end up joining, who knows? And that is just one example. Like Claire said, when you're at the checkout, um, another one, uh, Katie Ross, I don't know if she's on here. Um, Harry joined a new football team. Dan went along to the football. Um, I wasn't even there. Um, he had a hoodie on that said, husband of a wax boss. Katie said, oh, what does Laura do? What does your wife do then? She didn't know me then. What does Laura do? Does she, she thought I did leg waxing. And he was like, no, 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 she sells Scentsy. What Scentsy? That then prompted a conversation. She ended up buying the product. She'd never tried it. She ended up joining. So literally, that's just two examples of having conversations with people. So it's so important to always, without being pushy in your face, you know, we're not, I don't mean like walk it out in the street every morning and go, do you want Sensi, do you want Sensi, do you want Sensi? Which sometimes I do feel like doing. I feel like shaking people and going, you need to join this business, it's the best thing in the world. Um, but always just be switched on when you're having conversations. When you meet somebody, ask them what they do for a living because then they're gonna tell you and then it's human nature for them to say, oh, what do you do? And then there's your opener. You can have those conversations. Um, so they will ask you back. Be proud to be a Sensi consultant. Be proud that you represent an absolutely phenomenal worldwide home fragrance business like no other. Yes, we're a network marketing company. You need to be proud of that. This business is a gift. This business changes lives. There is a stigma attached to network marketing, but you need to honestly, if you want to network and you want to grow your customer base and you want to grow your team, you have to get over that. You have to get over that stigma because when you're having conversations with people, if if they think that you think like that, they're going to think like that and it's going to it's going to roll out. You have to be like the girls have said, you know, and like we said at the beginning, things are going to overlap, but that's the simplicity of this business. You have to be proud of what you do. You have to be proud of what you're selling. Um, when people talk about the cost, 
our products are not expensive. Do you see, I can't remember, somebody said this recently to me and I literally can't remember who it was. Do you see Lamborghini or Gucci apologizing for the price of their products? No, you do not. Our products are worth the cost. You can buy wax melts in Asda and there's a reason that they're two pound. They don't work. They don't, they, they rust like two seconds. Our products are absolutely, so that again, the cost is just one objection that you might come up with. You have to be proud of what you're talking about and that will that will roll out it, it is not an expensive product okay if somebody does say it's expensive no worries do you want to run some for free like you've got there, there's your opener to do you want to host a party do you want to join the business amazing if you think it's expensive you don't have to buy it do you want to earn it for free um and you can earn a little bit of money on the side as well so that, my husband says buy cheap buy twice exactly like 100 so do not worry, and this, this is applicable probably in any training that we do on any topic. Do not worry about the opinions of other people because honestly and truly, if you live your life dictated by the opinions of other people, you will never do anything. And that's not in an arrogant way, but that's in a, do you know what? I'm doing this and I'm proud of it. And there's, there's a, a quote that goes around. If somebody tells you you can't do something, do it twice, pictures, post pictures or something like that. Okay, um, never assume. So never assume somebody's not going to want Sensi. Never assume when you're having conversations that somebody might not want to join, join the business. Um, lifetime guarantee, exactly. Amazing. Like our products are second to none. So yeah, never never assume. Like when you're talking to somebody, don't think, oh, they don't want, they, they might not want Sensi. How do you know if you don't ask? Like literally never assume because um, there are people that are my customers that now are teamies that I, if probably in the beginning, I would have maybe assumed that they might not want the product or they might not want the opportunity, um, but they did. And again, these are all things that like we've all learned over time. So we're basically sitting here tonight to give you a shortcut. You don't need to go through these things that we all spent four, five, uh, like different, yeah, four, four years. In the, oh, shut up, Laura. You know what I mean? <laughs> Two years, three, however long. Um, we're giving you like the shortcut. So don't worry about that. Don't never assume. Um, and speak to everybody. Um, okay, sample packs, we've already covered that because that's actually a really, really good point. Like these girls said, if I'd have been, I need to take my own advice. If I'd have had a sample pack there this morning when I stood at that reception desk, I could have given her a sample pack, but I didn't. So always have sample packs. Um, last couple of ones and then I promise I will stop talking. Um, party. Now you're allowed, if you want to network, and you want to grow your business, you need to get out and party. I 100% grew my business on partying. When I joined, yeah, and know Lisa did as well. Woo, we're like, yes, we go party again. Um, when I joined the business, I totally admit the fact, and if ever, if ever any of you have ever shared, me, shared my story before, I didn't go into it thinking, I'm going to get to SSD, I'm going to grow a big organization, I'm going to like, you know, it's going to be our whole life. You know, I didn't, I didn't go into it for any of that. I literally went into it because I tried network marketing before. It hadn't worked. I was so burned by it. I was like, no, I'm done. Um, I literally went into it because I really liked the products. And I was like, yeah, I'll give this a go. I was a little bit drunk when I joined Sensi, actually. True <laughs> story. Um, but I was like, I never had any um, like expectations. And all I started doing was literally saying to people, do you want to have a party? Do you want to have a party? Do you want to have a party? I was literally out partying all the time because then you are in a room with like a captive audience. They, you've literally got them in the palm of your hand. You don't have to do loads. I think people really, really overthink parties and think you need to have a massive structure. Some people will. Some people will do loads and loads of games. You will find your niche with parties. And to this day now, when I get when I do start partying again, I just keep it really simple. I have like a little opening. They pass a sample around. I can share with you what I do. Oh, there's trainings on all our YouTubes and things. Um, but I just keep it really simple. And then people start smelling the products. And then again, you're in a room with people having conversations. And then what they see is those people earning free sensi. So then they want a party. And then they want a party. And then they, so honestly. If you're worried about having parties, just don't be, just enjoy them. And also with parties, don't think you need to have 20 people in a room to have a really successful party. I've done loads of parties where like, literally like, and I still have a great night. Because honestly, you know, it's just happening. Sorry, sorry, I've just said to mute. 
if I had a party and the hostess was messaging me in the day and saying, I oh, like my numbers are only dropping and there was only going to be me, the hostess and one other person, I would still, I would still go because either the hostess or the other, or do you know what? If I wasn't, I, could, I might even still go see the hostess for the night because you literally never know. That person could end up joining your business and fall in love and run with it and like, you know, be an absolute rock star. So you just never assume and, um, never think you have to have like massive numbers. Sometimes the smaller intimate ones are better because you can have conversations with people. Um, and the last thing I'd said is brand yourself, um, which is what Claire had already covered. Obviously I've referenced it in um, the hoodie that Dan had on. Like it, it all, like we've said before, everything we, we share and we train you guys, it all interlinks, like be proud of who you are. Think big, brand yourself. Be proud when you're talking about Scentsy. Um, ask your customers for referrals. Um, why have I written cars? Oh, yes. Yeah, so this is, oh, yeah, my, there, I'll do the two, two, these two things and I'll finish, I promise. Yeah, so with my car, um, I got um, my number plate when, and again, I'm not showing this to go like, oh, I bought a Range Rover, but I did buy a Range Rover, which I'd written as a status as my goal eight years ago. And 100% without any shadow of a doubt, if it wasn't for Sensi, I wouldn't have bought that car. So, I did get number plates that say Boss Wax and I am going to get the back window in a, some kind, I haven't found who's going to do it yet, I'll class, but I am going to get it. And Dan went, are you going to put that on the back of the car? And I was like, damn straight, I'm putting it on the back of the car because if it wasn't for this business, I wouldn't be driving that car. So don't be like, you'd just be proud of, of who you are and, and the business that you're representing. No, I know what it was. Um, coming back to what Lisa said at the beginning about saturation, if you went and stood out in your road and I think this was Sarah Jane who's another lovely star director she wrote a post about this if you went and stood out in the road and for half an hour all the cars drive past you how many do you know like maybe maybe one maybe none so just think about that like think about the amount of people that are passing you every single day in one 30 minute window and you don't know any of them so yeah literally saturation doesn't exist um and that's it I'm done thank you very much Fab, fab. Thanks, Hitan. Yeah, okay. So I just want to um, go on from a couple of things of what was said last night. So today I actually um, downloaded hashtag expert because I like uh, Laura Bynes was saying she's trying to up her Instagram game. I'm not very good on Instagram. I've got about 600 followers, not many. I'm not very good with what to hashtag. I never know. You know, I, I done a lot of, I was only doing stories. I wasn't really doing posts in my grid. So I've started to try and put posts in my grid. I've done a couple of reels. Same as Laura, I'll get like a, over a thousand views in the space of half an hour. And exactly the same, it blew my mind. I was like, a thousand views? I've had about 600 people on my Instagram. So if you can, and I'm not very good at technical stuff at all. If you can, download hashtag expert. But I did notice it charges. So it's free for the first seven days. And then I think it was like 30 something pounds for the year. So I've got a little trick. Type paid. in. So what, what you do? Oh, what? Never, never paid for mine. I was going to say, right. this is just for me. I probably am paying and don't even realize. Right. When it come up today, there was. I don't need to pay for it. It's probably, I think, once a certain amount of people download it. I think it then becomes that it's something that a bit like word swag. I never ever paid for word swag, yeah. whereas I know people now have to pay for it. So I think once it's downloaded a certain amount of times, it's no longer free. I bet so, that. Yeah, I downloaded it today. It was free for seven days. And then um, after that, it's 30 something pounds for the year. So um, I was talking to my personal trainer about it because he told me what he does with his hashtags. He saves them in his phone, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, you want to try this? hashtag expert and then I thought actually what you do is you type in um I don't know let's say you typed in wax so it'll ask you what your post is about so if you put in like home fragrance for example it brings you up 30 different hashtags for that um that particular thing home, home fragrance wax wax and warmers gives you 30 save those copy and paste them into your notes save them do it for all different things that you post about things that are relevant to you whether it's football, cooking, um, you know, what you're doing in your home, Scentsy, Wax, go in there, get them all off in the next seven days, save them all in your notes, and then you don't have to pay for expert, hashtag, whatever it's called, expert, so hashtag expert. When you open the app, Tan, 
if you go mm. into the app, it'll look like this. It that pops up automatically. If you press the little X up there, you can just use it as an. Yeah, no, it didn't do that. It for me. That it literally come up. Mine does it literally like, come up. New, new ver that is like the older version, I think. I don't think you've got access to everything, obviously. It's not like Pro or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. But I just thought for people who think, oh, I don't want to really pay for it, you can go on there for the first seven okay. days, type in the things that you do, save those, ha those hashtags, it copies it for you, save them into your notes. You've then got all different hashtags for all different things that you regularly um, post about. So I just wanted to quickly bring that up um, because I've done that today. Um, also... I can't remember who said something. I don't know if it was Claire or one of the Laura's. Um, talking about like networking, these kind of things, it doesn't happen overnight. So I think it was Laura Bynes actually, again, on Instagram. She's talking about being on Instagram. The lady that you followed that has got the same name as your daughter. Like you then didn't just message and say, oh, buy Sensi from me. These things take time. Networking can take time. It, it's not just going to happen overnight. Like you have to build on relationships with people. It's not something that you can just message someone or follow someone, message them, ask them to buy a from you, from you, and then you've got a customer. It doesn't work like that. You have to build relationships. It takes time to build them foundations. So I know that some people go, oh, you know, I've, I've followed people, nothing's happening, or whatever it is that you're doing, it has to be something that you're building on and not just think that it will happen overnight because it is something that takes time. Um, what else have I written down? Uh, going on referrals from uh, what we said last night about Lisa touched on referrals. Um, I do referrals in my borrow bag. So whenever I give my borrow bag out, I try my absolute hardest to not have that borrow bag given back to me. I try and ask the person who's borrowing my bag at the time, I don't pop a card in. Someone spoke to me about it today and said that they put a little card in and they've never had um, like it referred on. I don't actually say that. When I say I, I say to the person who's got it, it depends what I've got going on, but let's say I let them have the bag for two days. After them two days, we're obviously having a conversation about the bag. And then I will say to her, oh, now that you're finished with it, have you got any of your friends and family that you think would like to borrow the bag as well? So I try and get a borrow bag booked out off the back of a borrow bag. And nine times out of 10, that borrow bag is then given back out. I have an act to go and drop that bag off. They pass it to their friends. I make sure there's plenty of wax in there so that, you know, someone's not going to be able to use in two days. And I make sure that the person knows who's, who's borrowed it, that wax needs to, you know, stay in there if they're going to be giving it to their friends. So I always try my hardest to not get my borrow bag given back to me. I always try and get my borrow bag booked out off the back of a borrow bag. So make sure you're, you're asking the people that have got your borrow bag if they want their friends or family, if there's anyone that they know that they think would like the bag also. And I bet you they say yes. So that's another way of getting into people's 150 of their networks. Um, what else is there about? Uh, broadcast lists. So I've been saying, and I'm the worst for doing this, I say I'm going to do something. I don't do it there and then. I say I'm going to do that. I'm going to. It's one of the things I say to Claire all the time. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. And then I don't end up doing it. And for about two years, I put off doing a broadcast list for my customers. So I actually set it up, I think about three months ago now. I actually set up a broadcast list and it has made such a difference to my PRV. I've been missing out on so much PRV by not having this broadcast list. It saves me so much time. So let's say I've got 70 customers. I don't actually know exactly how many I've got. Let's say I've got 70 customers. When it would come to an LTO or, um, you know, if I was doing mystery bags or I was putting an order in, I would sit there and think, oh, God, I've got to message all them 70 people. Because putting a post on my group, not all of those people are going to see it. Or putting a, a story up, not all of my customers are going to see it. And I remember I used to think, oh, God, I've got to send a message out to all those people. And I'd put it off and I'd put it off and I'd put it off. So I would then miss out on PRV because I'm not asking people. I'm, you know, I might message a couple of people, but I'm not actually asking people if they want to buy anything. I've now set up, um, I'm just about to explain what um, a broadcast list is. So I've now set up a broadcast list on my phone 
I asked all of my customers for their contact details. You must have WhatsApp for this. Tan, is your connection gone? Or is that me? I think it's gone. It's gone for me as well. If I just contact them by doing it on a, on a broadcast, they wouldn't get any messages from anybody else. Um, and I set this broadcast up. And I never ever really used to sell much a percent of the month because I just probably used to do a post about it. I didn't really elaborate on cent of the month. Um, since I've been doing my WhatsApp broadcast list, now all of my customers are on one message. They don't see any of the other messages that get replied back to me. I'm the only one who sees the replies. But I send one message and it goes to all of my customers. Literally it saved me so much time and also, it's got me so many more sales. I now post up about my cent of the month in this WhatsApp broadcast. It goes out to every single one of my customers. And I don't think I've sold under 20 bars every, every on the first of every month. I've got at least 20 bars of cent of the month to put through because I'm advertising it on my WhatsApp broadcast. Before then, I might get one or two. So that's a big percentage in, you know, a big rise in the bars that I'm selling just from doing that. I've done the same with mystery bags. I've done mystery bags this month. I haven't done them this year at all. I used to sell loads of mystery bags, loads and loads and loads. Then because I got lazy and didn't want to message everybody separately all the time, you know, I'd just message an odd few people that I know would probably buy one. I'd post in my group. I got a little bit lazy with it. I might have sold seven or eight mystery bags. I done one text message. I sold 26 bags on, that's a big difference, big difference between selling seven bags, seven or eight bags up to 26 bags. And that is because of my WhatsApp broadcast list because they're all getting a message and it's on WhatsApp. So many of my customers actually said to me, oh, actually I prefer WhatsApp than Messenger. Not actually as many people like Messenger. I, I use Messenger all the time, but People actually do prefer WhatsApp as well. So if you haven't, try and set up a WhatsApp broadcast list because it has made such a difference to, um, you know, people replying. And if I actually send a message about a mystery bag, for example. I had people come back to me and go, well, I don't want a mystery bag, but could you order me? Blah, blah, blah. So I'm getting sales for other stuff on the back of advertising or asking if anyone wants anything. Um just from sending one message so it really is making a difference so if you can if you if you don't know what you know if you need a little bit more on a whatsapp broadcast there is loads of stuff on youtube because i am not i'm not great um definitely at least work smarter not harder and i'm terrible i work harder i'm not smarter all the time all the time and it wastes so much of my time and that has made made a massive difference if you still are a little bit unsure on how to do a WhatsApp broadcast, literally go onto Google, YouTube, or anything like that, because I'm not very tech at all. And if I've managed to work it out, I promise you that you guys will as well, um, because it is it's brilliant. Um, I also sent, and I copied this from Lisa, I also sent out to my customers um, about joining, but not about them joining. Uh, I sent a message out um, to all my customers on that broadcast, letting them know that I had a host join kit available for 25 pounds. Did they know anybody that would uh, be interested in joining? Um, and that went out to all of my customers. So it's a bit of an indirect way about letting everybody know that you've got a host kit for 25 pounds um, and asking if they know anybody that they think would like to join Sensi. You're obviously asking them and you're asking them but indirectly about joining. So it's another, you know, I wouldn't do that all the time. That it would probably be something like every six months or maybe even, you know, every few months. I don't know, but it's not something I would do all the time, but it's a really good, another good thing that you can use it for. Um, I wrote down old catalogs. Claire mentioned about when you're going into places with your sample packs, like dentists and things like that. Also, when you've got old catalogues and you don't know what to do with them, you think, what can I do with these? These are old. They're not, you know, some of the stuff we don't sell in there anymore. It hasn't got all the new, the new stuff in there. Um, I actually brand my old catalogues. So I had all these stickers, all these. I'm not very good at um, like printing stuff. I'm not very good at working stuff out. But I've got loads of different stickers for all different, different things. I designed them myself on Pig Monkey, which is a miracle on its own. Um, 
reorganising. But I have got I have got one. So for, for example, right, let's do this one. So for example, this is just a sticker, it's got my face on it, it's got my contact details on it. This actually goes in my customers' wax bars. Um, so that when they've when the, no that's a lie it's not it says thank you for being a fab customer have a free wax bar on me so any of my really good customers every now and again I might give them a, a free wax bar so this just goes on the front of the wax bar but I've got these um, that will have all my contact details on them I stick them on the front of my old catalogues and wherever I go I would leave a couple of catalogues and places it doesn't matter they're old because you're not actually really bothered about what they're looking at in the catalog because hopefully they're going to contact you just because of that catalog if they pick something that you know isn't for sale anymore you just say oh, i'm really sorry that's an old catalog i can put you a new one around or blah 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 it's another way of not throwing away your catalogs but hopefully getting some more contacts as well um so you can do that with your old catalogs um yeah i think that's it much like that when you get going. I oh, know I have wrote something else down, but I need to shut up. <laughs> I've just got like one more thing to add on this because I felt like I spoke quite a lot last night. So I'm not, I think you've heard like a lot of my top tips or a lot of the things I spoke about last night. Referrals are massively for me. It's one of the biggest things that I do to get new customers. Everybody refers me and I don't, I don't do masses more and I do party obviously when I can. But something that's happened recently, um, I've got a YouTube channel and this is about getting out on more different platforms. YouTube is becoming the second different, the biggest search engine in the world. So people, for example, are using YouTube to search for Ooh, what type of sensing woman should I buy? Or um, they might be looking for wax, for ex wax, for examples, um, reviews on certain different things or different type of, you know, burners they might be searching burner and it comes up actually since it comes up there one of my recent joiners I actually said to her how did you find me and she said oh I actually found you on YouTube when I was searching for a sensi warmer um Christy I don't know if she's on here but she was searching for a warmer on YouTube she came across my YouTube account that was linked to my Instagram account so she went and followed me on Instagram and then we started having um, a conversation going back and forth and she ended up joining she has absolutely smashed um, being certified, she's going to hit sensation start. She's absolutely loving her business. But it's because that that happened because I had another platform. So I'm not just saying go and start doing um, trainings on there because most of my um, YouTube is trainings for consultants. In fact, I think nearly every video by one is trainings for consultants. But as consultants, if you go live in your customer group, download it because you now get that option what I do on my phone I now get the option to download it save it to my camera roll and just start uploading them to YouTube it is so simple you do not need to be techie for YouTube you just literally set up an account um, and then you, there's a little plus button you click on the plus you upload your video straight there and again it's about clever um, things that you're putting in the actual title because that's going to be what people are searching so for example if you're um, I don't know doing how to put together a mini warmer, for example. Um, you know, mini warmer, how to put together a Scentsy mini warmer, how to um, assemble a Scentsy mini warmer. What's someone gonna search for? You know, I know, for example, you might give somebody a mini warmer, they, they buy it. What happens? They can't put it together. And they bought it off a random consultant. So they Google it, straight away, they're gonna go to YouTube to watch videos of how to put together a Scentsy mini warmer, how to change their wax, how to, I don't know, um, how to, you know, what scents might be the strongest in the Scentsy Summer Collection. They're going to be looking for reviews and that's going to be the type of thing that's going to come up in Google. Believe it or not, if you're like me, I Google everything. I never, ever go and ask the girls, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I do this? If I want to work out a YouTube channel, I Google it. And then I watch the step-by-step -step instructions of how to do it. If I want to print stickers, I Google it. If I want to, you know, learn how to network more in Scentsy, I Google it on YouTube. Um, and I tell you what, YouTube has become my absolute go-to. Like if I wanted to read the compound effect, I didn't have time to read it. I YouTube it and I got the whole book downloaded on audio, audio and I've listened to it. So if you have, if the only platform you are using, using is Facebook, you need to start using other platforms. Get Facebook under control, be like, yeah, I know what I'm doing with that. And then go and use other platforms. Because I can tell you like my kids, 
use YouTube better than I do. Harry, uh, Harry knows how to use YouTube better than I do. And that's the um, age group that, and that's the generation that are now growing up. So that's the generation that you want to be reaching out to. If you're just on Facebook, I promise you, the only generation you're going to be going to is probably the older generation because I know that the millennials don't really have Facebook. And a lot of my youngsters, you know, teenies, they go, oh, I don't really have Facebook. Don't really do Facebook. And it's like, you what? You what? <laughs> and there's another platform that's come in that is going to over overtake Facebook. I can't remember what it's called. Um, I know a lot of the Americans are using it at the moment. Um, it's out there. So go and actually look up YouTube. Go and start using that. Use other platforms. LinkedIn is another platform. I don't know, really know how to use it. But some of you that may be in more of a corporate back background, you might use it. I've got a LinkedIn account. I get people asking if they can link in with me all the time. My friend Gemma was going to teach me how to use it, but we haven't had a chance. Um, but again, LinkedIn is another platform that you can use. Twitter, another platform. Again, I've got a Twitter account. I don't really do a lot on it apart from complain to JD Sports on there. Um, but Twitter is another platform that you can use. If you want to get someone's attention, um, Twitter is a great way to do it. Um, lots of celebrities tweet. Um, again, that's going to need some Googling. Go and Google how to tweet. What are the, how, what are the type of tweets that are going to get engagement? The same as Instagram. If you don't know how to use it, go and Google it because you're, that's how you're going to build your network. Okay. And I promise you, if all of these things that we've given you, you're like, I've tried them all, they're not working, then social media needs to be where you go and tap your time and learn how to use it. And let me, I'm just going to finish on this. Networking is not easy. Okay. We might make it look easy. We might be like, yeah, we make it look like it's natural. It's not easy. It's something that needs work. Social media, it needs work. Customer groups being busy and getting comments and getting interaction, it needs work. Network marketing, it needs work. The Sensi business needs work, okay? Nothing comes to you and lands on your plate in a, you know, what's the word, like on a plate, yeah, nothing does. If you want nothing that's worth having, it will come easy. And I will finish it with that because I think that's really, really important. Um, and I'm not scaring people off. I'm not saying to you like, oh my God, I can't do this then because it's not going to be easy. I promise you. Yeah, we spoke about consistency like a huge amount last night and about you've got to be doing these things over and over and over and over again. And if you let it slide and you go, oh, four days without posting on any social media, like Tan said last night, don't expect people to then go and engage in your group when you put up a really post that you think, oh, that's a really good engagement post. Why is no one posting on it? It's, it's about you being consistent enough, learning your market, learning who you're selling to, and then creating content that actually is going to make them want to network with you. So um, I really hope that you have enjoyed, or we all really hope that you've enjoyed tonight. We really hope that you've enjoyed the last three days. I feel like my sensitive cup is well and truly full. If you yeah. still, at the end of all of that, and you're like, well, I've done it all, no, then I'm going to be, this is going to be really blunt, but maybe this business isn't for you. Um, I don't mean that horribly, but we've given you so much. There is something for everybody there. And, and I'm pretty certain there's stuff that we've still not covered that maybe you do, and you could share that in your team groups. We would yeah. love to see, you know, you sharing. They're your groups. Go and share them and say like, oh, this is what I do. This works really well. The girls didn't cover this. This hasn't been covered the last three days. Go and share it. We want to hear it. Because actually, it might be a little golden nugget for us as well. Sharing is caring. Anyway, um, I'm finished talking. I think that's good. I think we're good to finish. We've finished yeah. late again. I'm going to go and finish putting the rest of my kitchen together. I will get this downloaded and we'll get it all uploaded onto YouTube, ASAP. And yeah, we're good to go. So I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Thanks, everyone, for taking the time coming on to watch. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thumbs as well. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Dan. Bye, Mr. Sensei. <laughs> we'll see you later, guys. See ya.